Hi there, I'm Peter Millard, and in part six of the Traxler Workshop, well, I'm taking a look at the tracks and guide rails that make our saws work as well as they do. That's coming up next. So, yeah, I'm not really sure how long this segment's going to be, but so far we've concentrated very much on the saw side of the track saw. I thought it was worth taking at least a look on the track side of things, the guide rails, the things that literally keep our saws in line. Uh, as always with these things, there are a variety of competing standards, but I'm going to upset a few people here by saying that the Festool guide rail is the de facto standard. Yes, I know all you Maffel guys are typing furiously about how they did it first. Do you know what? I don't care. Uh, Festool had a saw running on a guide rail in 1962, and they patented what we arguably think of as the modern guide rail here with a central rib and a T-track and a rubber splinter guard in 1980. Now, when it comes to tracks and saws from other manufacturers, as always, there's a wide range to choose from, but the front runners are Maffel, uh, also Bosch run on those rails, uh, DeWalt and Makita. Uh, they're all totally separate. Uh, Makita do run something very similar to the Festool rails, although they have changed it very slightly in that they've got an extra little lip in there, uh, which they call an anti-tipping lip. So if you're using a, your, your Makita saw to make a bevel cut, uh, the saw won't tip over because they come a bit sort of side heavy. Uh, uh, I don't know how useful that is. I've never used it. I've never needed to use it. And it does mess with some of the accessories that you can get for the rails. So something to bear in mind if you do go for the Makita tracks. Uh, the other one is uh, DeWalt, of course. DeWalt have their own standard of rails, which is completely incompatible with everything except the DeWalt saw. Uh, they're a little bit of an oddball one in that they've got a, a rubber strip on both sides of the rail so you can make a cut without turning the track around. Uh, I don't really understand, to be honest. I was told when I saw the demonstration of it a long time ago that it was to, if you were in a tight space like doing a kitchen fit, you wouldn't have to wrestle uh, a track around. But given that you know, the re very relatively limited range of sizes <laughs> to what make, I don't know how much of a problem that actually is. Uh, and then there's the Maffel tracks. Uh, Maffel tracks are really good uh, in a way. They have the second mover advantage in that they can see the mistakes or the uh, uh, the less ideal parts of the Festool system and improve upon it. In particular, the method of joining the tracks together is very, very good. Uh, and possibly that's why they don't offer such a wide range of tracks themselves, because you can join them fairly easily. In fact, Festool offer by far the widest uh, range of individual track sizes that you can get. Uh, most of the saws come with uh, a long enough track to make a cross cut in a full sized 8x4 sheet of, of whatever, uh, plywood or MDF or, or whatever you're using. So 1220 by 2440. So uh, most saws come with at least a 1400 mil rail. Uh, the DeWalt comes with a 1500 and the Maffel comes with a 1600. Uh, so let's take a look at these two rails. We've got the Aldi Shepak rail on the right here and the Festool rail on the left. You can see they're similar but different. Uh, the, the basics are the same. You've got this central rib running here which the saw rides on uh, and you've got underneath a, a T-slot that you can fit accessories in like clamps that will clamp the rail down without getting in the way of the track or the saw itself. Uh, underneath You've got a couple of neoprene strips for grip, and you've got the rubber splinter guard. That's the same on both rails. And above, you've got a couple of coloured low friction strips to make the saw glide easily without marking the aluminium body of the, uh, of the track. Where it differs is on the left-hand side here, the Festool track has a, a, an open T-slot above, so you can fit either the clamps or other accessories like stops and that kind of thing. Whereas on the Shepak, you've got a slightly different arrangement here. You've got a, a lip on both sides uh, of that T-track and you've got a T-slot underneath. So you could clamp that further over, I guess, but I don't know why you would want to do that necessarily. Uh, the, the sizing is slightly different on these. So as I say, this is uh, similar to the Makita tracks. Uh, if you did want to use any of the add-on accessories from Festool, you'd struggle to do that uh, with the 
uh, Aldi or Shepak rails. Now I mentioned earlier on that all saws come with the ability to cross cut a full sheet, a full 1220 board and the majority of entry level saws come with two 700mm guide rails like this one. I understand why they do that, it's convenient to ship and package and it minimises the risk of damage during transit but it does mean that you've got a join in the rail just to do a simple crosscut and that's not ideal. Uh, it comes as no surprise then that the first accessory that most new track saw owners look at is for a longer guide rail, a single 1400 piece and in fact most of the entry level saws, until this Aldi saw anyway, uh, the only company that would actually sell you some additional rail was uh, Lidl's Parkside saws. They would actually sell you another pair of 700mm rails uh, at a very, very reasonable, uh, less than £20, I believe, but you do have to jump through a few hoops to get it uh, and go through Lidl's customer service. But for all the others, they just sort of abandon you to other third parties. Now, ironically, Festool's 1400mm rail uh, is one of the best prices that you can get. It's about £45 for this, uh, uh, presumably because they make it in sufficient volume. Uh, but other than that, uh, if you wanted to buy uh, the Shepak 1400mm rail, it's about 60 quid. Now, that might make sense if you paid 160 for a saw, but if you've only paid 80 for the saw, that's an awful lot of money to be spending just to get an extra 1400mm rail. So, so otherwise, the only other game in town, if you do want a single length of rail, is the Makita. Now, the Makita 3 meter rail is about 140 quid. I bought one a long time ago because it was vastly cheaper than the equivalent Festool, and I actually cut that down to a 2100 and a 900 so that I could uh, trim doors very easily because I was doing a lot of doors at the time. But if you just want to cut a 2440 board of 18mm plywood or MDF, well, I did wonder, rather than shell out 140 quid, if it's worth your while trying to make one. Now, fairly obviously, nothing we'll be able to make will match the relative sophistication of this kind of extrusion. In fact, it'll have more in common with a simple saw board, the sort of thing you might make when you have a circular saw to make uh, uh, straight cuts with that. Uh, but we'll use the one big benefit of the track saw to do this, and that's the groove in the base of the saw that fits in the rib on the rail, and we'll make our own rib to fit in that nice and snugly without any play. Now that's quite a long straight cut, and what I've got here is a couple of offcuts. You'll need to invest in probably a half a sheet of 6mm MDF for this, or plywood, whatever, whatever you prefer. Uh, I've actually got a couple of small offcuts, one of which will is almost the perfect size, about 220mm by 2440. So I'll need to cut a rib off uh, the other piece. We've got a good factory edge on that. I'm just going to tape these together to keep them uh, absolutely snug and in place. Uh, and then I'll use my parallel guides to actually cut uh, that rib in three passes. I'm taping the boards together so they don't shift around. Then with the two rails joined and set in position, I'm setting my parallel guides against the edge of the board before removing them and making my first pass. Then I can reattach the guides to set the rail and complete the cut, taking care not to move the rail. Now with uh, six or seven hundredths of a millimetre variation across a full eight foot, 24, 40 mil length of a, of a 16 mil strip, cut with a cheap track saw uh, and two 700mm rails belted together. You might think that I've just proved that you don't really need a long rail. I'll just add that uh, uh, that comes with a lot of experience as well. <laughs> I'm surprised at how well that came out actually. Uh, but we will continue to make this big rail because it's the convenience of having a, a, a single rail like that uh, that is uh, what it's all about really. With the tape removed I can set about marking where we want the rib to be, not forgetting to leave space on the rail for clamping. 
So we know that we've got a good clean factory edge on this side. We've got the rib within the saw groove and that's fitting really nicely. We've moved this inboard slightly because we're going to cut a clean edge on that to give us our cut line. So all we've got to do is set approximately where we want this rib to be so that we can fix it down. And that's, I'm just using a simple sliding square for that measurement so we can get that accurate all the way along. Now because I'm doing this as an example rather than as an actual working saw board, I'm just going to glue the rib down with some double sided tape. I have to say this 3M double sided tape is particularly good but if you were doing it to keep for real for longer then obviously you'd need to glue this down with some quick set epoxy again or, or wood glue or whatever you whatever you fancy. Again a little bit of double sided tape every little while will help sort of seat it down but we'll do that now. I'm going to give, I've given this a, a quick wipe down with a cloth and I'm going to go over it with a tack cloth then we'll put the double sided tape on and we'll get this fixed in position and we'll use a straight edge as well just to make sure that we're not getting any any bends in this rib because it's that rib that really guides the saw and gives you the straight cut. So obviously the next thing we're going to do uh, is make the cut along there to give us our cut line. Uh, but this is working out really nice. I'm surprised at how well this is done. A uh, nice snug fit on the original track there and then on our, uh, our homemade track. Again, can you see that? Move you down a bit. Uh, really nice and snug. No play in there at all. Uh, so you don't have to mess about re-snugging it to a long rail like this. Uh, but let's make that uh, splinter guard cut and see how we get on. And there you have it. I don't think you'll find a simpler, cheaper, eight foot, 24, 40 mil guide rail than that. In fact, I don't think you'll find a 24, 40 mil guide rail because they all seem to be 2400. Uh, literally a half a sheet, so uh, 2440 by 600 mil, uh, would yield two of those and it would cost you less than a tenner, even retail from Wix. I think it's less than eight pounds actually. Obviously there's no uh, grippy stuff underneath, so you'd have to watch that the, uh, the rail doesn't move around a bit. You could go the whole hog and buy uh, 10 metres of neoprene uh, grippy understrip, the same as you get on Festool rails. You'd have to route that into little grooves. Uh, cost about 20 quid for that. Or you could just go to Ikea the next time you're there uh, and get some Ikea Stop uh, anti-slip underlay. This is really thin, comes in a, in a sheet two metres long and it's less than a couple of quid. A couple of strips of that cut and spray glued on the underside will probably take away any of the slippiness that you might find. Now fairly obviously you don't have a splinter guard on this, uh, you're just using the edge of the board and over time that will wear, but if it is something you want to keep and if it is something you want to use regularly, well three meters of Makita rubber splinter guard will fit on this just fine and cost six or seven pounds. It's what I use when my guide rails need a refresh. Uh, all you'd have to do is route in a two mil or so groove on the edge uh, of the underside of the rail uh, and glue that in. It comes pre-taped with double-sided tape so it's really easy to apply and that would pretty much give you a perfect working full-length rail for less than probably 20 pounds. But I guess the burning question is, is this really worth your while? Uh, and I suppose it depends on how much you want a long rail. Uh, the only alternative really is the Festool 2.4 meter rail at 170 quid or so, cheaper street price that I've found, or the Makita 3 meter rail that you'd then have to cut down, uh, which is about 140 quid. This is a, a genuine 2440 rail, nobody's making one of those. Uh, and it's taken me uh, a couple of hours to do whilst shooting the video. If I was just making this without trying to shoot video, I could rattle this through in about half an hour, uh, certainly less than an hour, even including the grippy stuff and the splinter guard uh, as well. So that's a pretty effective use of your time. You know, it's cost 20 pounds with those little bits and pieces. 
uh, versus 140 that's a £120 saving for an hour of your time. I think that's pretty good value. Uh, obviously, only you can decide whether it's worth doing for you. Uh, but I'm going to call this a day here for today. Uh, thanks for watching the video. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. I've certainly enjoyed making it. Uh, join me in part seven, the last part of this series, where I take a look at tool improvements and a couple of minor extras that we can do to get the best out of your Trexel. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.